good morning. Welcome to worship. We're delighted that you're here worshiping with us at St. Paul Lutheran Church in New City, New York. I'm the Reverend Rhonda Hain. I'm the pastor here at St. Paul Church and Christian Day School. If I can serve you and your family in any way, or if you have updates for our prayer concern list, please contact me at the church email address, which is St. Paul nc at gmail.com. That's S-T-P-A-U-L-N-C at gmail.com. We begin in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh. 
sixth Sunday after Pentecost. The call to worship is from Psalm 65. You are to be praised, O God. To you, the one who answers prayer, to you all flesh shall come. Although our temptation to sin is strong, you blot out our transgressions. Happy are those who draw into your presence. They will be satisfied by your beauty and holiness. You reveal awesome deeds and truth to us, O God of our salvation. Let us now pray together the prayer of confession found in the bulletin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe you will provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. I invite you now to offer, in this moment of silence, your personal confession. Continue to pray together. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. And now we claim this good news. If we confess our sin, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning, young people. I'm glad you're worshiping with us today. Today's message is a story, a special story called a parable. And this parable is called the Sunflower Parable. And it's by a woman named Liz Curtis Higgins. It's a story about Logan. He's a young gardener, and he wants to make giant sunflowers. So follow along as I read this story. After the warm sun of May chased the last frost away, Logan and the farmer chose the very best sunflower seeds. Giant, declared the seed packet. Logan was sure his sunflowers would touch the skies in August. Logan and the farmer work side by side. They hoed the hard soil, they cleared the heavy rocks, they yanked out those pesky weeds that might choke their plants. The farmer added fertilizer. Logan pressed the tiny seeds down into the rich soil. Then the waiting began. The warm summer rain brought fresh water. The sunflower seeds packed, or I should say poked, their thirsty heads out of the soil. Drink, drink, Logan called from the window. The hot summer sun brought warmth, brought light, which made the plants stretch taller. Grow, grow, Logan sang out. How long until the flowers will bloom? How long until they reach heaven? July turned into August without making a sound. The giant flowers turned their blossoms toward heaven. They followed the sun with their own round, brown faces. Young people, the giant sunflowers, they grew from a tiny seed. 
So here's something amazing. God planted within your heart and mine, within our hearts, a seed, a seed of faith when we were baptized. And this seed, just like the sunflowers, this seed is watered and it's fertilized. How? It's watered and sweet and, and fertilized by prayer, by participation in Christian day school, by participation in Sunday school, by participation in worship. And like the sunflowers, like the sunflowers, we can turn to the sun. Not the S-U-N up in the sky, but the sun, S-O-N. We can turn to the sun, Jesus the Christ. As we follow his words and wait, as we allow him to nurture that seed of faith in our heart, it can do what? It can grow giant size. It can grow tall and strong. And that's my prayer for all of us, that we would be like the sunflowers, turning forever to the sun, who is the Son of God, Jesus Christ, growing giant-sized in faith. Let it be so. Amen. And now we close with a prayer, and when we pray, what do we do? We fold our hands, we bow our heads, we close our eyes. Repeat after me. Thank you, God. For the gift of faith planted in my heart in baptism. Help this seed of faith to be nurtured and watered and fertilized by your presence in word and sacrament. Help me, like the sunflowers, to turn always to Jesus and follow his words and ways. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.
Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 13, beginning with the first verse. Glory to you, O Lord. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. He told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seed fell on the rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and they had no root, and they withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seed fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble and persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lords of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, as far as I know, Jesus wasn't a farmer. But Jesus knew something about sowing seeds. In today's parable, Jesus focused his attention on soil composition and growth environments. He says that predatory birds and rocky, thorny soil will hinder plant growth. But Jesus isn't really talking about soil and seed and cutworms. He's talking about the good news of the gospel. He's talking about the fertility or openness of our hearts to hear the message. Jesus is talking about the predatory worries and the troubles that, that can stunt and even abort the growth of God's life within us and around us. Now, this parable gives us more than enough cause for introspection. Introspection, You know, questions like, am I like the path, hard and impenetrable? Am I like the rocky soil, with little spiritual rooting? Am I like the thorny soil, with worries, Worries that are choking the joy and the hope God desires for me, for my family, for my congregation and community and world? I don't want to go there this morning. I don't want to focus on the characteristics of the soil. I don't want to emphasize the daily assaults against our spiritual growth. I think we're well aware of it. I do want to focus on sowing and reaping. And to do so, to focus on sowing and reaping, I want to tell a modern day parable. A successful chief executive officer was growing old, and he knew it was time to choose a successor to run his business. Instead of choosing one of his directors or even one of his children, he decided to do something really different. He called all the young executives to the company together. He said, it's time for me to step down and choose another CEO. I've decided to choose one of you. 
The young executives were shocked, but the boss continued, I'm going to give each one of you a C today, one very special seed. I want you to plant the seed, to water it, and come back here one year from today with what you've grown. I will judge the plants that you bring in. The one I choose will be the next chief executive officer. One man named Jim was there that day, and he, like the others, received the seed. He went home and he was excited. He told his wife the whole story and she helped him. She helped him get a pot, some soil, some fertilizer, and he planted the seed. Every day Jim would water it and look for signs of growth. After about three weeks, some of the other executives came to talk about their seeds and their plants because their plants were beginning to grow. Jim kept checking his seed, but nothing ever grew. Three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, and still nothing. By now, his peers were talking about their plants, but Jim didn't have a plant. He felt like a failure. Six months went by, still nothing in Jim's pot. He just knew he'd killed his seed. Everyone else had trees by now, and they were tall. He had nothing. Jim didn't say anything to his colleagues at this point. He just kept watering and fertilizing the soil. He wanted the seed to grow. A year, a year finally went by, and all the young executives of the company brought their plants to the CEO for inspection. Jim told his wife he wasn't going to go and take his empty pot to the board meeting, but she asked him to be honest with what happened, and Jim knew she was right. Even though Jim felt sick to his stomach, even though he thought he would probably be so embarrassed that it would be the most embarrassing moment of his life, he took his empty pot and he went to the board meeting. When Jim arrived, he was amazed at the variety of plants grown by the other executives. They were beautiful, all sizes, all shapes. Jim put his empty pot on the floor. Many of his colleagues laughed at him. A few felt sorry for him. When the chief executive officer arrived, he surveyed the room and he greeted his young executives. Jim tried to hide in the back. The CEO said, my, what great plants and trees and flowers you've all grown. Today, one of you will be appointed the next CEO. All of a sudden, the CEO spotted Jim at the back of the room with his empty pot. He ordered the financial director to bring Jim to the front, and Jim was terrified. He thought, the CEO knows I'm a failure. Maybe he's going to fire me today. And when Jim got to the front, the CEO asked him what had happened to his seat. And Jim told him the whole sad story. The CEO asked everyone to sit down except for Jim. And he looked at Jim and then announced to the young executives, Behold, your next chief executive officer. His name is Jim. Jim couldn't believe it. He thought, how is this possible? Since I couldn't even grow the CEO's seed. The other executives voiced their disapproval. There was an outcry. There was an uproar. They said, how could he be the new CEO? Then the chief executive officer said, one year ago today, I gave everyone in this room a seed. I told, I told you all to take the seed, plant it, water it, and bring it back to me today. But I gave you all boiled seeds. They were dead. It was not possible for them to grow. All of you except Jim have brought me trees and plants and flowers. When you found that the seed wouldn't grow, you substituted another seed for the one I gave you. Jim was the only one with the courage. Jim was the only one with the honesty to bring to me in a pot my seed, the seed I gave him. Therefore, he is the one who will be the new chief executive officer. Friends, 
The old CEO chose Jim because he took direction. He followed through. He persevered and was honest about the project's outcome. He didn't leave when the going got tough or the pressure from his peers mounted. Jim had, had something very rare in, in today's society, very scarce. It's called moral character. Moral character based on Christian values. Jim was willing to stand alone and even be shamed. Jim had courage, and since he had courage and honesty, with a small task, with a small task, the old CEO knew that he could be trusted with a much greater task, the much greater call to serve as chief executive officer. He, Jim, could be trusted to lead the organization. This parable concludes with a few assertions. If you plant honesty, you will reap trust. If you plant excellence, you will reap quality. If you plant humility, you will reap greatness. If you plant consideration, you will reap perspective. If you plant forgiveness, you will reap reconciliation. Friends, let us be careful what we plant. Let us be careful what we plant in our lives, in our families, in our church, in our community and world. For it will determine what we reap later. Let anyone with ears listen. Let it be so. Amen.
offering is an opportunity to return thanks to God for all our blessings. It's also an opportunity to contribute to God's work through our church. Now there are many ways to return thanks. We can return thanks to God by praying. You may pray for our church, our world, our community. Um, you can take a look at the prayer list of many persons who can return thanks by praying for others. We can return thanks by serving and helping those in need. We can return thanks by offering our financial gifts as we're able. If you would like to contribute to St. Paul Lutheran Church, you can do so by sending a check, mailing that to St. Paul Lutheran Church, 323 South Main Street in the city, New York. Or, if you like, we have on our website a secure giving link. And you can give in that way using the website, which is www.stpaulnewcity.church. That's S-T-P-A-U-L newcity.church. As always, thank you for your generous gifts and support. And now I invite you to prayer. Our time of prayer will begin with prayers of thanksgiving, and after each petition, Helen and I will say, Bless the Lord, and we encourage you to pray, thanks be to God. God of new life, thank you for planting the seed of your word and the seed of faith in our hearts and minds. Thank you for providing opportunities to nurture this seed through worship, prayer, and service. Bless you, the Lord. Thanks be to God. God, our provider, we thank you for our family, friends, colleagues, church, and all who walk with us support our life and faith. We thank you for food, water, clothing, shelter, health care, and other essentials that support our well-being. Bless we the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. God, our protector, we thank you for the many people who protect us from harm and heal us from injury. We remember especially all military personnel stationed stateside and overseas. We also remember police officers, firefighters, EMTs, healthcare workers, and all COVID-19 essential workers. Bless me the Lord. Thanks Amen. be to God. Lord God of our ancestors, we thank you for children and youth. We thank you for what you have done and will continue to do to nurture, protect, guide, and walk with children, youth, and young adults. Bless we the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God of the nation, we thank you for the rich diversity of languages, races, and people who make up our country. We thank you for the rich diversity of skills, gifts, talents, and perspectives each brings. You have gifted us with this good land and all who inhabit it. Bless be the Lord. Thanks be to God. God who holds our future, we thank you that you know the plans you have for us, plans for our welfare and not for calamity. We thank you that we stand upon this biblical truth in hard times. Bless be the Lord. Thanks be to God. Loving God, we observe this moment of silence to offer our personal prayers of thanksgiving. Bless we the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Gracious God, you alone are worthy of praise. We offer our thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Call into unity with one another and the whole creation. Let us pray for our shared world. Gracious God, 
Your word has been sown in many ways and places. We pray for missionaries and newly planted congregations around the world. Inspire us by their witness to the faith we share. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great, creating God. The mountains and hills burst in song, and the trees and fields clap their hands in praise. We pray for the birds and animals who make their home in the trees, and for land stripped bare by deforestation. Empower us to sustainably use what you have given. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Reigning God, we pray for our nation's leaders. Increase their desire for justice and equality. We pray for our enemies. Bridge the chasms that divide us and guide authorities to a deep and lasting peace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Abide in God. Care for all who are in need, especially Julia, Ellie, Jody, Colleen, Eula, Kenneth, Shannon, Lucille, Marie, Karen, Lee, Lori, Joan, Salvador, Gundra, Julia, Luella, Laura, Helen, Rolf, Pauline, Cheryl, Stephanie, Pat, Jennifer, Ben, Barbara, Lorraine, Eileen, Kevin, John, Hector, Patty, Patrick, and Charlie. For those who are doubting, renew faith. For those who are worried, provide relief. For those who are struggling, ease burdens. For those in fear, give hope. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Renewing God, revive your church in this place. Nourish, nourish and nurture the seeds you have planted that we might grow as disciples. Replace what has been completed. Sustain our ministries and deepen relationships with the wider community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for all who have died. Comfort all who mourn in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. We pray especially for the family and friends of Jim Nolan, Milda Rosa, James Bishop, Evan Wright, Ruth Beers, Don Collins, Janet Hinckley, and all who mourn family and friends lost due to the coronavirus. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of justice, we remember before you those who suffer want and anxiety for lack of work. Guide the people of this land so to use our wealth and resources that all people may find suitable and fulfilling employment and receive just payment for their labor. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of peace, we pray that your holy and life-giving spirit may move every human heart, that the barriers dividing us may crumble, that suspicions disappear, and hatred cease. And with our divisions healed, may we truly live in justice and peace. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we sing together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Thank you. 
And now we see the blessing. May the Lord bless and keep you. May He make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you His peace. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let me be. 